Cave Noir, or Black Wine Cellar in French, is a Japanese exclusive, procedurally generated dungeon crawler with certain roguelike elements, stripped back to its fundamentals. The qualifying characteristics are all there, randomly generated dungeons and characters moving in a turn-based fashion. This was fast becoming a popular niche, with great titles such as NetHack, Ragnarok and the Sega duo Dragon Crystal on the Master System and its bigger brother Fatal Labyrinth on the Mega Drive. However, I challenge you to think of another one on the Game Boy. That's right, there isn't one. As your dreams on the Game Boy Color was maybe about as close as it got other than Cave Noir. Where these types of games usually offer permadeath as a feature, where you restart a newly spawned game if you die, and a massive, long dungeon slog from start to finish, Cave Noir is a little gentler on you. The game is split into four separate dungeons, each with their own increasingly challenging quests. You can switch between dungeons as you please, and there's no discernible advantage to completing one over another. The quests usually involve killing a certain number of monsters, collecting a certain number of coins or orbs, or freeing a particular number of caged fairies. After you accomplish the quest goal, a door will open somewhere in the dungeon. It may be worth your time to delve a little deeper though, as there's no leveling up system, and your strengths and health can only be increased by finding power-ups in chests. Due to the difficulty increasing above your stats usually, it's also worth strategizing in such a way that you save any potions or spells until the harder parts, and maybe go try to find some after a dungeon has been cleared out. Die on a quest, and you don't need to restart the entire dungeon, just the quest you were last on. In a way, the lack of permadeath feels a little odd for a game like this. Imagine if in The Binding of Isaac you could just restart at the beginning of each floor, there'd be no challenge left. However, that's not to say that Cave Noir is an easy game, because it really isn't. You absolutely need to concentrate on every little move you make, as false steps are often punished, and over-aggressiveness leads you to doom more often than not. Unless you need to clear a dungeon of monsters, it's usually best to calculate your steps so as to avoid them, if you can, as there are no experience points and very few item drops to be had. Of course, you can't always dodge everything. Some floors are not expansive and consist of a mere footbridge, leaving you with not much choice but to strike out at the numerous ghosts, snakes, dragons and such. You're not completely useless though. At the start of each level, the magical Kirby tree fills four of your eight inventory slots with some tools for you. There's usually a potion or antidote, as well as a cloak that hides you for a short while, and some aggressive magic like a fireball that kills pretty much anything forthwith. Like I say, preserve these unless you're desperate as pickups are rare. Items really aren't as prominent a feature as other games in this style, such as Dragon Crystal where you use spells and scrolls more than your sword. But even so, you can find yourself scrabbling through your meager inventory, looking for something to help you out. Each quest takes no more than a few minutes, and with a battery backup and unlimited attempts, death isn't really that much of a frustration. This can lead you to being a little more cavalier in your playstyle, but it's not really conducive to success. The randomly generated nature of the game means you rely on luck of the draw a good deal. Sometimes you can cruise through levels unopposed, whereas other times a supremely powerful monster can spawn right next to you. Occasionally you'll descend some stairs into a room that appears to have no exit. If this happens, just walk up to the walls until a secret passage opens up. They do exist, but not in such a way that makes you need to look at all the walls. The location of them is virtually always implied, and they never hide any treasure. Musically and graphically, the game is fantastic. Each dungeon has its own theme song, and the sound effects really suit the combat sequences. The game looks brilliant for what it is, with fog of war in places and comical but still quite sinister looking enemies. The whole experience is quite delightful and, in retrospect, probably still playable without being able to read Japanese, as there's not much of a story anyway and once you learn what the use items are, then it'll become second nature.
Thanks so much for watching this video. Let me know your thoughts on the game down below, and if you can spare a second, give the review a quick thumbs up, it really helps out. Subscribe to the Portable Power Podcast for a new Game Boy review every day from Monday to Friday. Or alternately, new episodes of the podcast drop every Saturday and Sunday on whichever platform you get your pods. See you later on.